Well, let's see if we can do this here. The camera's a little off today. Nope, there you go. Okay, yes, this has been a while. And uh, okay, so in case you haven't known me, this is my quick, I do a vlog about once a week, but two weeks have passed and haven't done one minute to actually do one when I was out of town. I had a hotel room just to recap what's going on and a couple of good and bad things with life updates. Houses, eh, but it's getting along and looks like I'm going to sell it. Um, I don't think if I can, hopefully I could just get my money back and walk free. If I get lucky, I'll make 50 grand. If I don't get lucky, I'll at least break even. I'm happy. So now other things I'm busily doing is busily, busy, busy bee uh, is, is the Skipper toy, which I don't know if you've heard of. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description to the store site. I launched the store site. I'm actually already getting orders, back orders, which is a surprise. I need to find more stuff to sell on that site. Yes, someone squeaks. Someone would be a squeaky salesman. That just seems a little weird. And you've seen my true self instead of seeing me as Drake the Dragon. Yeah, I know. It just this spoils the magic. But okay. So a couple of other things. I've been annoyed of the stupid auto off feature of my car. So I finally pin mapped the entire schematic of the connector. And um, other than the fact it has the, in the nifty but really annoying drying, driving modes. I actually only like the uh, mode for the uh, slippery driving. But so I pin mapped it, so it gives me an idea what those pins do on the connector and what LEDs was there. Kind of took a wild guess on the illumination wire, um, measured the voltage, and it's it's an analog E because it's obviously dimming your dash, but it's not, I don't think it's analog. As far as, I didn't really get a chance to look at it with a scope, contemplating doing it, but it's not really necessary. But it'd be kind of cool because it's probably a PWM and the voltmeter is probably seeing the average voltage. So solid illumination is being the average of eight volts. And as you may have seen really closely, there's a there was a little uh, a regulator that went poof on me and completely fried the chip. But luckily I didn't have my computer connected to the board. So otherwise 12 volt would have gotten to the five volt rails and completely blew up the uh, computer like it did last time. That's exactly what happened, but it's a netbook. So it's probably gonna get garbage soon and go upgrade it to something a little bit more fancier like a simple but not so expensive tablets now. They've, the Windows tablets have gone cheap, so I'm not terribly worried. I'm just not wanting to spend any money, so I might sell stuff for parts and then use all that to get something bigger or whatever, whatnot. Um, I'm trying to not avoid doing the long-term problems. So I need to tape this up tonight. I've already updated the prom programming on it, so that its job is to look at the indicator light that says engine off is off or not off when it's off the light kicks on which is good because then this stops pushing the button there's two opto isolators and all its job to do is act like a solid state relay the reason why i didn't use a mechanical relay well other than space but you can get smd relays a dime a dozen and you might see this in a future board design this is just a really crude prototype but the idea is that there's two buttons I push on the on the center console. Um, I'll link you to the, to the Twitter thread that I created uh, that actually has a little description. So, and one of the button is the engine auto off. So all it does is when it powers up, obviously I need to get power somewhere, but we'll talk about that. Uh, so it just pushes the button when it's off. So it always makes sure that the engine auto off feature is off because it resets every time you start the car. It's extremely annoying. So, yeah, we're going backwards in time, apparently. I really hate SoCal and a lot of the new EPA crap. So the other option is the engine driving mode. Um, I'm actually going to push that for the time being, but I have actually ordered what I think is the correct connector because I now know how to take the dash apart for the second and third time. I should be able to do it repetitively without damaging the center console, which I've kind of scratched it up a little bit. Uh, scratches are like, yeah, I know it's, a, it's only a less than a year old car and it's almost at 20,000 miles. So I'm not really too frank on warranties, but it's just like any car you can modify stuff on as long as you don't go crazy and really break something. So in this case, this just jams into the connector because see the pin size of the width of each pins are actually the same. It's the uh, 0.127 or 0.1 uh, inch uh, pin spacing. So 
made it convenient as long as I could find something to jam in there that's long enough to jam in there. So these pin headers that were pretty long I found in the toolbox apparently were perfect for that. Sadly, I'm going to get rid of the pin headers once I get the proper header and put those on. And better yet, I've actually looked at the way the circuit is done, and I think I got all the parts to make a pass-through cable. So if I just make a pass-through cable and tap onto it, the beauty of that is the buttons will still work. But on the second thought, that may not be a good idea because I keep hitting those goddamn buttons and it just switches mode. Uh, I'm about ready to make a plexiglass barrier to just stick on top of it, so I stop pushing the buttons when I lay my hand there. I don't know why automakers have made cars like stupid tablets. It's just stupid. I just want my old car back because it had knobs, and they aren't the same knobs. And you can touch feel everything, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road. Putting touch screens and all this garbage. And there's actually even a sensor in there. If the car is moving and bumping around, it will even block you from using the touch screen. So it's like... I miss my knobs because I could touch, feel, and do things. It's kind of like people who drive a stick shift. The reason why you drive a stick shift is because you learn to multitask better. You learn to take an account driving conditions and adapt to it as necessary. That's the feel of how you drive. You're operating a machine. You learn to feel it. It's like they say, after you get used to your car and how it drives, you have no trouble parking, pulling out of a parking. Now, we have a backup cam, and that really helps. When I was growing up, we learned to turn our head pull our head back and and kind of know where our car's barrier points are. So you have this feel, but not even a feel. It's just that you know. It's like when I was wearing my tail, I know exactly where it would swing. So I would never run into something and be like, you're going to tail whip. Well, I start to tail whip a lot more now because I haven't really worn it. But when I did wear it a lot, I got so used to it. I didn't tail whip anyone, actually. I knew exactly where I was going. But it's like anything else. You get used to it after a while. The new car, I can't get used to it because it switches modes on me. So the driving mode is one of the biggest complaints I really hate. Even though if I put it on one mode and the fuel is really light, this car drives like there's nothing in there. So it's like got no momentum. It's got no mass. It's literally just extremely hard to deal with. So this will solve one of my two problems, but just for tonight, because I will go ahead and take this exported code and probably dump it somewhere and someone else could go and tinker with it as well. And the schismatic, I'm going to do a quick Eagle Cat schismatic with it. Um, probably as a pass through. I don't know. Maybe I'll do it not as a pass through. What I'd like to know is from anyone who's worked with Ford Escape 2000 and 2020s that actually might have a brain or two to tell me or has a copy of the electrical wiring diagram. Because there are other wires there that I might be able to hijack. So as for the powering this, this is the really cool part. If you know anything about simple rectifiers, you could actually take the power off of the illumination line. So once the illumination line kicks on for a good amount of time, it pretty much is the power line because it will provide, yes, an annoying square wave because of the dimming mode. But if you just think of it from one basic principle, you take that energy and you rectify it and you charge a smoothing capacitor. As long as the capacitor has enough to charge up to at least 7 volts or so, you can regulate it and run an Arduino or something that's only like 6 milliamps of power. And going back to why I didn't use a real relay is because a, a uh, solid state relay like an opto isolator only needs between 1 and 5 milliamps to actually at least turn a lot of them on. And the one I have is a Darlington, so you can turn it on as low as 1 milliamp. And it'll actually, because the Darlington one has a really bigger gain to them compared to the non-Darlington version. They do function the same way, but the Darlington version, Photo Darlington try, um, opto isolators, which are very good, I'm not using it in regulating form, I'm actually using it as switching, is a very good way to push a button so that you're electrically isolated with the button contacts. You know, you could do it with a relay or because it is automotive, they're actually 12 volt levels. Yeah. I... Don't think the uh, uh, the even though it is active low, it shorts it to ground, which is cool. Um, but the LED light is not active low, so that's a kind of a good thing because I'm able to connect the Arduino's power supply, the regulator, which is the why I blew the first one up because that regulator doesn't like to see more than 10 volts. So I got a good old classic LM7805, which 
is a 30 year old regulator design and you're good to 48 volts as long as you keep your power dissipation low. In my case, 10 milliamp errors is not that high of a power dissipation. So the, I can get away with a really tiny little TO22 regulator. Otherwise, I'd stick one of those, excuse me, the TO92, TO220 case is the bigger one that you normally see with heat sinks and battery chargers and all the other stuff. So now the next step. Do I just tape this up and stick it in my car and call it a day? Or do I actually build a board and my friend and have a couple of friends try it out to see if this is a way to uh, to get rid of that annoying feature of the car that most of us don't like? Because I've seen people sell something similar, but they were asking $100 to $200 for it. I could do this and mass produce them as cheap as $10 a piece. So think about that.